Hello, horror fans. It's me, Cassandra, and Kylie, and Mary. <laughs> <laughs> and if you noticed Mary's accessory, no, this is not Snakes on the Plane episode. No. Um, we are talking about, well, Kylie, it's your anniversary episode. We'll get into that in a second. But Kylie, what movie are we doing? Anaconda. Yes. Anaconda. Yeah. It's, hey, in the, it's in the movies my dad introduced me to category. Yeah. Real quick, I love Kylie, but man, screw you. Make <laughs> <a lot of movies. laughs> I can't believe uh, you've never seen it until now. Uh, listen, I stay away from snakes, yo. I know, but, but let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's this movie. I just want to ask was it worse than Bermuda Tentacles? Nothing's yeah. worse than that. <laughs> I was about to say. So it's it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. If if you are listening and you know what we're talking about, you're that person. Yeah. Uh, Anaconda is currently streaming on Eximo Play for free. I think that's what how it says. That? It's what X, that? It's X U M O. Oh, oh I've heard. I've heard of that. That yeah. sounds like a, a spicy site. <laughs> yeah, I it's mean, some that's, on there. that is a it is different... on Max. Oh, well, that might have Where just is... came on. Yeah, and I think well, Prime. I'm not sure if it's with a subscription or a rent, but yeah. Well, um, don't quote us on that either, because at the time that I did the research, it was not showing up on Max. Uh, at... and plus, these streaming yeah. services don't listen to us; they do what they, they want. do not. I don't even want to talk about the 90 Day Fiance Tellos. Yeah, that's a whole debacle. But no, we are celebrating Kylie because Kylie has been, well, it's over a year. If you watched our GhoulieCon content, Kylie had a cake, um, which we will definitely like post a whole thing about. Yeah. Um, but she got a, I got a cake made for her at Jungle Gyms. We went to Jungle Gyms. That was a I whole. posted it on the social media. I made a thing. Yeah. Um, but it's past like then. You. And listen, it would have been I sooner, like but light, I mean, like back to school season. It's just like next year we'll be better about it. Like it, we know. Probably yeah, I'm not getting cold talked by school year again. No, we, we just, we are. Wow. No, it really has. <laughs> Uh, I agree with I agree with her though because I thought I was prepared and that first day of school came and I was oh, like I my kids I, been sick already. My kids yeah. my youngest has barely been back in school for the first of you know whole week of the year and he's sick. Zane yeah. starts next week. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's just it's a little rough. So uh, I apologize that we haven't been posting lately. We took a, a brief siesta because life got a little crazy. But this episode we're returning, okay. and we're going to be finishing up when nature strikes back. Um, well, the people watching the video, what is going on with my head? I don't, I don't know. know what's going on with your head. I have no idea. I have no idea. But um, yeah, I'll do but, this so I don't look like. <laughs> it's there it's there i promise i promise my head's there but I yes promise my head's here and my hair so also too it has been a little bit of crazy time because we did add another podcast to our roster and the you know we're just all over the board we're going to be adding more podcasts to our roster here in the next year or so and it's just going to continue to grow. So uh, we'll have weeks like that where life just hits us. We try to be as consistent as possible, but I cannot make any guarantees. Like I, I didn't expect my child to bring home a stomach bug and then literally get hit by it the day after. I also burnt my finger on a roast beef. One of the days. I mean, like it, worth it, but still at the same time, like it, it was pretty, I didn't, yeah, I I didn't expect that whole drama. No, no. So, but I'm super excited to talk about Kylie, and I am very excited to talk about Anacondas, um, and talk about the actual article that kind of brought all of this on. 
um, because none of us knew this and it just added a whole other layer. So I am super excited to get into this. If you have not seen Anaconda at this point, stop, go watch it, yeah. especially now that we know that it's on Max. Um, yeah. And come back to us. But we are about to get into it. So let's go ahead and cue the music. And we are. I mean, this uh, is why you're my fucking twin. I mean, we were, we, were all, we were. We were all dancing. dancing. <laughs> we were all dancing. To be fair, though, I can see when it's going to end, so that's why I stopped. Um, so we were still going. I know you guys were. It was great. So we are back. We are talking about Anaconda. Before we get into Anaconda, though, we are going to talk about Kylie. Hey, I love her. Oh, um, oh gosh. So. In a little game we like to call Kylie's yearly wrap up, we're going to ask Kylie some questions about her year experience with the Horrorcraft podcast and find out so much more about Kylie. So the first question is, what is your favorite episode that you have done so far of the podcast? The Descent. No, that or really, or, or really oh, any of the of Reddit it. stories. The Reddit stories have been pretty great. Yeah. Um, yeah, Reddit stories, especially our expressions and stuff. So, there's some new ones that I found that I could just not. I I, I want to roll them out right away. Um, I'm ready for another Reddit episode. I know. I I feel it. Um, your favorite. Um, theme that we have done so far Ooh. um let's see here i really i really loved all of it october to february was really fucking badass all the scenes i can't i can't just pick one but next month i'm very very excited for because we're talking about haunted houses yeah about yeah we are haunted that's haunted. a that's a little that's a little preview a little clip yes. A little clip, a little clip, a little clip with a P. Yeah, well, I have these like spiderly long line uh, nails though, so it's like a little clip, a little clip. Um, but okay, so favorite guest on the podcast, and you technically, Sarah's part of the behind the scenes crew. So like Sarah's already automatically like in that. So yeah. Um Jamie and Joanna. Joanna. Well wow. and like when Mary came on. Yeah. I mean, when I was a guest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, but you, you know, literally you know, came on as a guest. Like yeah, that was such a fun episode. Literally mm -hmm. people don't realize this and this is something we could talk about now. And this will definitely the lead on into the future, especially now that we're about to hit our hundredth episode. But when Mary came on, we literally finished that episode, and I asked Mary that night to come on the podcast because all like we just the energy was great, <laughs> and we were like, "Cut the check, let's do this, let's run it back." Like we had already kind of like we had briefly like talked about bringing somebody else on, and because we we're expanding in different ways, but then. It was like that magic, you know, that Wendy's secret recipe that we just like. She was like the last ingredient that we need. Yeah. To get rid of she was the crabby. Ingredients, but like she. Yeah. Bam, yeah. Like, like Emerald Lagasse would say. Yeah. She, she was the Krabby Patty secret formula. Yeah. <laughs> so. We, well, we let me tell you as a guest and as a person who listened to the podcast and I listened when Kylie became part of it. You did. I loved when Kylie joined. I was like, this is such a cool addition because you ended up doing it by yourself 
and no shade to anybody at all. And all of a sudden there's Kylie. And I was like, oh, okay. She's cool. Oh, she seems really rad. The highest compliment that I have received so far is I have had conversations with Brittany originally um, about like what the podcast meant to us and stuff like that. And we had had so many visions and I could definitely, I'm going to get into this more when we talk about the hundredth episode, but like Brittany never wanted to stay away. It was a, a choice she had to make yeah. for her own self. But the fact that Brittany, when we were talking about it, she felt like, okay, like what we signed on to do, like what you and I wanted to do in the horror community, you're doing it with two people that I actually think kind of embody that spirit i think that's the highest compliment like that it to me, gives me that chills because yeah. i know I, I started binging from the beginning and i just adored Brittany or bubbles when she was on and then all of a sudden it was just you but i still liked it but i was a little i was worried i was like wait a minute and then kylie came on and i was like oh i like this fit i yeah, like it kylie Kylie is in Bolt and Mary too. Um, this is Kylie's just, day. Yeah. But truly, <laughs> like Kylie, I, I've, I've said it before, but I about like, I almost gave up. Like, I almost tapped out. Like, I didn't know if I was going to keep going. We started talking about spooky moms. And then I was like, why don't you just come on horror crap? And I don't think Kylie realized it. But she kind of saved me in that moment because it reinvigorated how I felt about horror. Like, I never really lost that feeling, I would say. But it definitely gets buried when you are trying to hold on to this. And Horror Craft isn't just a podcast for me. It's like it's what family. makes it. And it makes it's family and it's making sense of my own trauma. Like, that was my thing with Brittany. As Brittany and I grew up together, we we had a lot of traumatic things that we went together through together. Brittany was the one that saved me when I went through everything with Braden's dad. And it was my way of taking this beautiful gift she had given me of bringing me back to life with horror and turning it into something. And it was killing me to think about, but it, it was just something that I just did. So when we did that first episode where you came on, I was like, I, I think we're going to be okay. And it kept making me want to go back. So um, I'm always grateful for that. But I mean, like, I feel like that's our friendship. Like people just met us at GhoulieCon. Yeah. And I could tell you, people who meet Kylie and I in public, we're the same way we are on here. Yeah. Lord help next year's ghoulie con when mary kylie and i are together i'm flying gonna be, out yo yeah because <laughs> there's gonna be some extra shenanigans oh it's oh. there are gonna be people that are gonna be like these women are crazy thank you and we are yeah but we're crazy for each other but yeah i mean Brittany was always my family it was hard making it connect with that connective tissue because there was something about that and I don't think I realized that until you came on. So that was kind of, for me, like the best way because I got that back, you know, I, and it, it became even deeper when Mary came on. So, but like Mary said, this is all about you, but um, my favorite episode that we've ever done is definitely before Mary. Well, actually Mary was on at the time, but Mary had some things going on. Ghost ship, and uh, not ghost ship, but no ghost. Oh, of Mars. Ghost, Mars. Ghost, yes. of ghost of Mars was so oh. much. Oh about. yeah, you guys were so funny. There was something about us watching Ghost of Mars and like our commentary with each other. I don't know what it was. And I remember talking to Mary about it because I know Mary at the time. I think you were pretty bummed that you weren't going to be able to do it, but you had some stuff going on, which mm -hmm. like we totally get. But like. Her and I being able to do that, I don't know what it was and what we were feeding off of each other, but that episode. It was magic. It, yeah. It, my other one is the aliens um, that we did where we, we all were talking like mad shit. But like, I just love those, those memories for me. 
Um, um, for, for me, it's when we did the first Reddit one with her. With oh, Kayla. my. Kylie came in with that Skinwalker stuff. She came in on her BS. Dude, that video is still in my head, dude. dude I, 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 I think about it randomly at night. See, Kylie is my conspiracy that was wild sister because we feed off that. <laughs> that and music. Anything with music, like Mary's literally like my music twin. Very much so. Like she'll she'll I'll be thinking of a song and she'll burst into singing it. And it's like I was just fucking thinking that I'm about to do the same thing. <laughs> but this is why you're my best friend. <laughs> Very true. Um, so we watch a lot of movies, a lot of movies. Um, I mean, like, I feel like it's in the hundreds a year for this yeah, podcast. A month. Yeah, it is. It's crazy. What is what movie had you not seen before you came on this podcast that now you've seen that has become like your favorite? Bro, there's a lot. Definitely the Scare House. Sarah, Michael, we love you. Um, oh, don't forget Bermuda Tentacles. No, that's the fuck that shit. <laughs> okay, we owe an apology to Kylie because we yeah. made her watch it by herself. In our defense, though, we didn't realize it was going to be that bad. Like, I remember specifically when we watched it together. We were like, oh, shit, we fucked up. We probably should have watched that with Kylie. Like, we're sending her in by herself. To be fair, though, we sent Steve in by himself, too. Yeah. And I also loved um, The Invisible Man. I really fucking liked that mm -hmm. a lot. Um, yeah. There's, 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 on that. Definitely, there's definitely more, lots more. But well, I'm you got me into the the Hell House franchise. You got me into it. Obsessed. Yeah. I yeah, dude, I'm obsessed with that shit. I just did the whole whole fucking deep dive on all four of them. Yeah, no, I've seen I them that. all like a billion times by now. So, since this is your first year, what do you see for yourself in the second year of horror craft? Because I I. Like, first of all, obviously you're pregnant. So, you know, what? baby, baby is going to be here. You're this, year, <laughs> <laughs> this year was such a, like a learning experience. And I really feel like this podcast came to my life for a reason, especially I had only really been on for like a couple months, maybe a month and a half. My mother died. Like the day we dropped our very first episode of Spooky Mom's Coven was the day I found out my mom passed away. And I don't know where I would be in my grief journey without the podcast and horror, and horror movies in general. That's always been my comfort. It's always been my go-to to help me make me feel better and get through things, you know? Um, yeah. Especially because I don't always do things the right way of getting through things. I can, but, I can relate to that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, th I guess like this year, I don't feel as much of a newbie anymore. A little bit seasoned, you know. I think there's still a lot I got to learn, but I'm excited to. I love what I'm doing with you guys. Kylie and I got to go to Ghoulie Con together. Like, that oh, was a so much fucking fun. Yeah, that was. I mean, I feel like afterwards we were both like, did we actually have, because it was a long journey home. It was a lot, and we both felt like we were put, like we were broken, and we need to put our backs on some rice to get back. Yeah, because yeah. uh, it was a lot. Uh, Mary, I know what I'm going to say, and I'm not trying to make the pregnant person cry. Okay, mm -hmm. I really am not. Yeah. Um, but Kylie, uh, Mary, what does Kylie mean to you? Don't make me cry. <laughs> God, you guys. Oh, Kylie is one of my favorite freaking humans ever. Like, she always makes me smile. I think she's so cool. I feel like I'm like the new kid, and she's like the really cool chick. And I'm like, same Can I hang out with you. Like, and I just love her taste in music, her humor. I love that she calls me out on my bullshit. <laughs> she does. She does. And, uh, I'm just so thankful that 
I got both of you guys as friends. Like, it oh. still blows my mind. Like, it's meant to be. And yeah. Kylie, you were someone who I thought was, oh, cool on a podcast. Same with you, Cassandra, actually. And then all of a sudden, I'm in the mix. And now I'm, oh. like, best friends. And yeah. I still, I feel so lucky. And I'm your ride or die. You know, I always got you. You know me. I, I'll fight for you in California. <laughs> I never thought I'd have a best friend clear in California. Right. How many oh, times? Wow. How many times do we Google California flights? Because I'm telling you right now. But at this point, I'm getting uh, Facebook ads for California flights. <laughs> That's how bad it is. <laughs> I am so excited to come out there and see you guys and i'm gonna cry and it's gonna happen so um but kylie just you're such a great ad to the podcast you're such a great person i think you're freaking rad and i'm so excited to celebrate you thank you thank you i love that well why are we doing oh, Illuminati? <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let's clear something up right now. We are not affiliated with the Illuminati. No, no. This just we means just like... This because we're weird. Yeah, we do it for like show of support with uh, Horrorcraft. Like, Did you community. know the Illuminati originally started as a religious cult? A religious group that they were going to take over? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it fits in for the episode. Um, so what a lot of people, don't, a lot of people don't realize is when Kylie and I go to Johnny and friends, they have a, the, the last day they have it where you can say something the last two years I have said, so, well, I said something every year, but, um, reflecting on my thoughts from the week, but I always turn to Kylie and she is always the one person that makes me cry. Like I am really trying to hold it together. All of a sudden I look at her we're bawling together okay um for me it's the same way like i never thought i would have such solid female friendships especially like i had that growing up definitely with Brittany and our friend dixie and you know i've been very blessed to have such positive female role models in my life with my grandmother but um i never thought that I would be able to connect to somebody the way that I connect to both of you. But there's something about Kylie and I, the first time we met, I just looked over and I was like, we just picked up on something. We Her and I both. That there was, yeah, we did. yeah. There was just this like connective tissue and we didn't really even get that deep. The first year we went to Johnny and friends together. Yeah. Like we talked the second year, somehow we just like, we were like, okay, we're cool together. Now we are, we're doing this. And this year, like, we even have a family photo of our families yeah. together with our STMs, minus Brayden, because he's asleep on a bed, on a little, like, pool chair and would not get up. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't yeah. get up. I'm on vacation. <laughs> no, no, he was dead asleep. He was, like, he was gone. Like, they, we have a picture of him that he's asleep, and it's just then our picture uh, with all of us. But... Like, truly, I don't think I've been ever been able to go the deepest levels that I have with 90% of the people that I have been friends with. And that is a very, like, it is also some things that I have been working through personally myself. And obviously, this podcast has helped me in so many ways. And this season of my life has been very transformative, especially with the power that we've kind of held even just this summer with like really getting into our groove and really like turning things out and rebranding and, and moving forward with stuff. And, but it's just something. These are my people. <laughs> like these are my two people. Like I could say that I could keep a secret, but I can't keep a secret from the two of them. Like no. I can't, like I, I literally will kill myself trying to keep a secret from them. You, for can't, you, guys, you both can't get anything like past me. No, I can't. I, I and I, I don't I even try. Like, I can tell by your guys' voices, like that something's wrong. You'll be like, "I'm fine." I'm like, no, you're not. No, <laughs> no, no, you're not. Let's talk There's, about it. But to me, 
we don't get to see each other all the time, right? But there are so many times, like even just this year when we went to Johnny and Friends, I don't know, like if it, it's just my heart needed it at that point in time. But I just looked over and I was like, this is my person. Like, this is my person. This is my person. Like, you know, we were together and we were talking about being together with Mary. And I was just like, you, you know, you hear about like platonic soulmates, like, you know, people have their like husbands and obviously like that, but you hear about these friends that like, really, they were just meant to be together. These are my people here. Like I have truly never felt as strong as I do at this point in my life where I feel like I have these people that will get me no matter what. And exactly. I can be the worst possible version of myself. And they will still ride for me every single day. And they see the best in me. They push me to be a better person. And it's just something like so magical in that, like, that format. So I'm just so eternally grateful. I'm glad you did come on. You made me realize so many important things in my life. And I am so incredibly appreciative of that. I don't know why I'm going to start crying now. Um, I'm the crier in this group, <laughs> but it's just like, it's just like, we've gotten so deep throughout the years and like, there is not a time that goes by that I do not talk to either one of you, um, yeah. throughout the day. I I'm constantly calling Kylie all the time, Mary, you know, we have to catch up on the time jump and stuff, but Mary and I are at the same pace too, but Juju will always be like, why are you calling my mom? Like to the point where he's like, stop calling my mom. mom. Yeah. Why are you talking to my mom all the time? Um, and to me, that's just magical. Um, I just don't know what I would do. Like, and I agree with Mary. I never felt like I had, like I was part of the cool club or anything like that. Mary, you know, Ky Brittany and I oh, were always. You guys think I was fucking cool in school. I was not. I was not. I didn't become cool till like I got clean ten years ago, like literally. I feel yeah. I was well, not the clean part, but after high school, I was like. Yeah, like I didn't get cool till I got clean in 2014 for the first time, and then like I have not felt. Stamps. Like I've uh, been cool at all until I turned 30. Really. There's one more thing I wanted to say. Is I was thinking, Kylie, I am so proud of you. For being yeah. clean, such a good mom. It is not both of you. It is not easy to be a special needs mom, and you guys rock it, Kylie. I am so amazed at everything you do for Zane because he's nonverbal, and yeah. I couldn't imagine you just you floor me. I think you're such an amazing person, and those kids are damn lucky to have you as their mom. Yeah, no, true. I like truly like I. You know, Kylie I went and I. A lot. I went through a lot this year, honestly. Like looking back, you did. And look at you. Even, and even like with Zane, like that was after my mom died. That was a really hard time for him. Yeah. And then yeah. even Julian, like, yeah. But those kids, like, he's such a good mom. I have had the privilege of like seeing them at different stages, right? And there's just so much and it is just experiences that I hold deep within my heart. Like, right. Like my kids look at you as Aunt Cass and Aunt Mary. Yeah. And I, and I try not to do that as often with people because I've just been let down in the past, but there's mm -hmm. truly like a moment where that like really like connects with my, you know, Brayden and, and we are able to really talk about things, but I just, I am truly grateful because I have found my friends, my soulmates. And because of that energy that we have put into this together, we have attracted so many other good people in our friend, like we're circle where we've created this it group of our own. Show, like just fucking be yourself. Yeah. Like You'll find your tribe. About, yeah. Just be yourself. Like that's something I always tried to remain important about since I came on a podcast is always being myself. But then again, I don't know any other fucking way not to be myself. I can't help myself to not be myself. Yeah. And you know? me too. 
much. And if you think, <laughs> yeah, I, I will tell you that if you think for one second that any of this that's going on right now is a front, I will tell you, meet us in person and you will realize that it's, it's even it's deeper. It's a little bit worse. Yeah. I mean, like, well, I mean, like our shenanigans, but also yeah. like meeting us in person too. Like we are those people. We are, fr we are genuinely friends with each other. We are genuinely our own crowd of people. And we like, love we, our fans. Yes. Right. And the thing that I am just so proud of is when you first came on, you didn't think you could do this. You were very like unsure about things. And I was like, I don't think you see the, the you that I see and you have become that person. I know. And, I really was very, very unsure of myself, but now I feel very, very, I would say fully, but all the way secure with just. I mean, I'm always going to have yeah. imposter syndrome if we're being honest. Yeah. Like I'm a, well, just, well, my husband said that jo a quote from Joe Rogan said, if you don't have imposter syndrome, you're not good. That means yeah, you're not you talented. Really what is that it man. that I was about to say? What did Ken Sledgehammer say at GhoulieCon? If you don't want to go back and watch your first episodes of that you cut on your podcast and want to punch yourself in the face, that's not growth. But you know what? Throughout all of this, because I can be my own worst critic, especially because I've always hated how I sound being recorded or on camera. I have not done that at all. No, you haven't. I no, haven't. I and that I just goes to show... I feel comfortable. Yeah. And I just yeah. don't give a fuck of what people think about me anymore. Except no, for like my husband, them. my kids, and my co hosts. Yeah. Ooh. We have a podcast together. We have two podcasts together. Eventually more. I mean. And we're building all of this stuff. So it's yeah. just like, I know. I, I exactly. And there are a lot of moments that we have. Like, listen, I have not put the footage up on yet, but. If I put the video up of us going through jungle gyms, as funny as that footage is going to be, it literally is not going to be as funny as some of the moments that didn't make that because that was such a funny experience to go through with Kylie where Kylie was just like, oh my gosh, look at the, and like the one, like what killed me, she had so many like just off the cuff things. Like when she saw that they had the little baby shark, she was like, you're one of Bruce's little motherfucking kids, aren't you? And literally, like, I was like, what the fuck? And Dude, the fucking Albert Einstein oh my fortune teller AI motherfucker. Yeah, she went and it twitched. And she went, you're one of those AI motherfuckers. I like you? <laughs> she, that. she did. She did. Because somebody, there were people near us in the store, and there was literally somebody that looked over at her and I. And I but it fucking took, twitched. It I, twitched. And I almost took out a display with laugh between laughing and getting freaked out by the fact it moved. I almost took down a whole display of like sodas. No, when I'm I not walked even into the bathroom that was a porta potty, I felt like I was like on shrooms or acid. Like, I felt like I entered a different dimension. She opened the door. I literally opened the door for her. I was like, Kylie, I just have to show this to you. She was like, well, good. I need to know where the bathroom is. She's like, well, I guess. And I was like, no, they're not actual porta pods. I opened the door. She was like, what the fuck is that? I was like, it's a bathroom. She walked through. She was like, I don't know. She walked. She came back out because I had her drink and my drink. She came back out, got her drink. She was like, I don't know if I just walked through a magical portal or not. I feel real high class having that experience. That was, that like, was fucking crazy. It was. I felt like I would, like entered another fucking dimension or portal that I didn't quite ask for, but at least I got out. I mean, I I just see this next year just being fantastic. I am so thrilled to be going on slightly. I hate I hate when men say this, so I'm saying this like nicely. Um, but I'm so thrilled to be like in this experience where you are pregnant and we get to like share these different things with you. So I just drop Kylie some love. If if you're watching this episode, you love Kylie, uh, drop your love for her in the comments, drop a heart, a black heart emoji. Um, my heart is black, but it's loving and cold. It's 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 full of love. <laughs>
I and I'm so excited because our one of our favorite f- to film together was an Ice Cube movie. It was Ghost of Mars, and now yeah. we're talking about another one. We're talking I about Ice Cube so hard. I fucking love that dude. I was he does not get enough movie. credit in the horror world. No, dude, he does not. he's such a good man. Like since all this, like this is definitely not a horror topic, but like this Diddy shit. Like, he's come forward and talking about just, like, I never went to those parties. I knew what a lot of that stuff was about, and that is not what I was into. And getting, like, a little bit of flack for it. But, like, standing in his own trueness. You know what I mean? And yeah. standing up for what's right. Like, he's a... And, yeah, and, he's and a the, guy. He, the fact that very easily when his son wanted to play him in, in the movie... When he said, listen, you're going to have to try to get this yourself. Yeah. And that he really, and his son like took that challenge. And it's actually because of his son that we're doing this episode right now. Because yeah. he, um, in an article, when he, Cocaine Bear, when that came out, because O'Shea Jackson, Ice Cube's son, um, he was in it. He actually did a... Um, uh, like an interview for Cocaine Bear where he talked about Anaconda um, because they were saying, you know, Ice Cube, he, you know, battled a giant snake in Anaconda. He, he states in this article, which I will link in the description down below, he got the final kill in Anaconda with the axe, which was dope as a kid. Spoiler alert, by the way. Um, to see your kid dad completely destroy the snake. Um, when Ice Cube, if he, when he was asked if he had any advice for his son doing this, he said, um, it wasn't, he didn't give him any helpful advice because his killer animal didn't have any feet. So <laughs> respect, but the part that like, we, this is the part that like, it went viral because of the fact that also too, they kept the animatronic steak and it is in a museum in San Francisco. I have not got confirmed if it's still there or not. It seems like it is still there. Um, but he says, I, O'Shea goes on to say, I was on the set of Anaconda a lot. I was into reptiles and everything. This is the nineties. They're not really popping when it comes to working technology yet. This animatronic snake, it's 300 or 400 pounds, and it would go haywire. It would tear up the set. It destroyed catering one day. So a lot of the scenes where you see the actors wrapped up in the snake, they are scared to death. Because if if this pops my, my dad in the mouth, it's tragedy in Brazil as rapper Ice Cube drowns in the river. You just have balloons go up. You just want the balloons. You balloons go up. <laughs> <laughs> but um thankfully ice cube did survive anaconda um but i played a clip for kylie and mary before we came on here where it was a behind the scenes there are aren't very many <laughs> and it's only part of the animatronic but a lot of what you see in the movie is the animatronic not cgi yeah. because we will get to it in our random facts but the cgi and i in this movie was crazy expensive per uh, like 30 seconds per minute um so that is a fun fact but um anaconda it's such a good one so oh. before we get into it anaconda is just a, a a bevy of stars, right? Because it's got yeah, the set cast. It's got Jennifer Lopez. It's got Ice Cube. It had Danny Trejo in the beginning of the movie. It's got Angelina Jolie's father in there. Um, there's just a lot. Owen Wilson is in it at one point. Yeah. Um, the guy that plays. Hold on, I forget his freaking name. The British guy. I love oh, him. he's the one from I- The Mummy. Yeah, um, hold on, let's see here. Can you tell that I'm a mummy super? Of course, if you okay, so Eric Stoltz, I like him, he was Dr. Stephen Kale, yeah, I like him a lot. Um, Jonathan Hyde, Warren Westridge, he was the National Geographic voice in this or guy that was supposed to be talking for this documentary that they were making. So, this is via Google, 
Google. The synopsis for this is filmmaker Terry Flores, who is played by Jennifer Lopez. Early Jennifer Lopez, okay? Don't come, for us. Don't come for us in the comments, okay? We will not elaborate. Yeah. Um, is traveling deep in the Amazon jungle, looking for a forgotten tribe. Terry and her crew, which includes an anthropologist and a cameraman, come across Paul, who is played by John John Voight, who is Jennifer Lopez. I mean, not Jennifer Lopez, but uh, Angelina Jolie's father, uh, who is stranded on the riverbank. Which, by the way, that thing was sketchy to begin with. Like the whole thing was fucking sketchy to, to begin we're, with. We're going to come back. To, we're going we're to come back to this. Um, he offers to help them find the tribe, but his secret behavior puts everyone on edge. They realize too late that he is using them to find a legendary anaconda that's worth a fortune if they can catch it. Can we talk about John Voight and the way he looks at Jennifer Lopez? <laughs> He's such a fucking creep in this movie. I, I kind of... This is, this is me the whole time I'm watching the movie. Like, mm -hmm, I'm going to disappear. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Right. Cringe, cringe. I was like, mm. Can we talk about the beginning? Why are they going to do him like that? Oh, Danny Trejo, yeah. yeah I, was <laughs> like I don't understand. I mean, I, I I don't like suicide stuff, but I, I guess maybe I would have rather, I don't know. Would you have rather go out on your own terms or get Yeah, I would rather. Uh -uh. I am not going to feel getting eaten by a snake. What if it swallows me and I'm just chilling alive in there? Uh uh. Well, hopefully, you have like a, knife, that like a lighter inside and you can like cut it open or like, I don't know. I thought of this. Make that so movie. Good. I just know. Also, no. Venom? Ooh. So, you guys know what I was looking up a few days ago? What? Oh, yeah. You guys, know, you, guys, you guys know, like, I have to deal with like snakes in my fucking crick. My crick. She had an anaconda like in her back. Like it, it wasn't an anaconda, but it was it, it was, was wild. And they are poisonous and I do not like them in my little part of the creek. It's my little part of the creek. Don't come for me, nobody, anybody. But I have two small children that love this creek, especially my son that has severe autism. That's like his happy place. Those snakes can go wherever the fuck else they want, but there's a certain part of the creek you're not gonna fuck with. But the other day, I was looking up where I could get anti-venom and whatnot, and it is very fucking expensive. The cheapest place I found was like a pet pharmacy. Some I don't even know where. It was like 300 bucks, but it usually mm, averages... That's my garage. From, <laughs> it was like all pet, hold on. I'm going to pull it up. It was like all pet... I don't know. Snake anti-venom oh. cost. I guess we need to get this between seven thousand nine hundred dollars and thirty nine hundred per vial money. They don't sell a lot, probably. No. No, and I guess like not all hospitals carry anti venom. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Very slightly. I know. <laughs> but you can buy a kit off Amazon for like twenty twenty five bucks. That's like, you know, like when you give little kids or babies medicine, the syringe, it's like that. And you suck the venom out. Now, do you have the venom now? <laughs> so does I your mean, friend have to do that to you? And then you guys are just swapping <laughs> venom? I mean, like the venom, I mean, I guess she like would have to wear gloves. I wouldn't think to wear fucking gloves in that minute. I would just suck it out because I, I my mean, mom, we talked about this one time. She's like, well, you'll have to like suck the venom out. Like, I mean, I've seen that before, like, on stuff. Like, yes. I, I mean, I'll be honest. Unless it's Venom, Venom, you know, Tom Hardy Venom, I'm not sucking anything out of anywhere. You know, <laughs> that's the only time I'm going to make it an exception. I'm going to be I real mean, honest. I mean, like, fine, but... <laughs> I mean, like, you know, he, he's been spent bars since way back in the day. Like, he is, he is gorgeous. So, um, he is. But um, no, that's insane. So I say this with love. But let's go ahead and get into it because I already know Mary's got things to say. So Mary, lay it on I us. 
I got so many notes. One, how are you going to do Danny Trejo like that? Some bullshit. Two, I already discussed John Voight. He's very creepy. Um, can we, t and my favorite part of the whole movie was the ending. He's like, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch. Didn't he do something like that on Ghost of Mars too? Yeah, yeah, he did. They went. No, it was him and Natasha Hedrick, uh, where they went, where they were the guns and stuff like that. Because that's why we said, you know, Ch -ch. yeah, I was like, he did that, and like, I was just like, is this snake undestructible? They have done so many. I know. Things. I know. Is well, this ever gonna die? You know what's crazy about that? From if you didn't get that in that statement, that animatronic actually, like the movements that you guys saw in guys, that they had the actors wrap. So like the ones that get squeezed to death and stuff, and the the actual actors were in that. Like, and I thought that that was like a total thing until I resurfaced and I will see if I try to find it. But Jennifer Lopez said the same thing. Like she was inside the snake, like inside the hold of the animatronic snake. And that's, if it's 300 to 400 pounds, that is like a hundred foot snake, guys. Like it has to be. I'm just saying. And that's a big animatronic. That's a, that's a crazy the I don't part even... that had me screaming the most was when John Voight's character, I don't know how to say the name, is it Sarone? Sarone, yeah. 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 Um, pours the blood on him to oh, use yeah. his face? And he doesn't want to kill it because he's like, you know, he's looking, he's wants like the reward, I think, or something. I forgot what it, it, It's going to call it, it because it. he was like an exotic um provider of like different animals and stuff and if he caught the snake it would it would yield him like tons of the story ends up changing later down the movies i have actually seen most of the anaconda sequels um especially the one that they did later down the road where they change up the story where they had some like bigger stars in it um and uh i mean bigger stars for the moment uh kind of thing but anyways um they change it to where the anacondas they are like the key, the tribe that they're talking about and stuff they also are like the keepers of this thing called the blood orchid which can make like a cure all for cancer and different things like that and the anacondas that's their breeding ground so in the the newer one where that happens there's literally a fucking like snake pit full of like shit ton of anacondas just trying to meet with each other. Whoa, when they fucking set off that fucking dynamite to blow up that wall, it was a fucking snake wall. Dude, that traumatized me as a kid. And when the snake bit Westridge's fucking thumb, I thought I was going to die. Thanks, Dad. I love you. R.A.P. But I've been terrified of snakes since because of this movie. I am so... This movie, like, got in my brain that this ride... <laughs> now is not like cedar point shut it down for this year but they had a boat ride that they brought back um for their like you know celebration thing whatever and the boat ride was did it go to that island huh did it go to that separate part uh, it, it went it point? went it went around it and the crazy part about it is is Okay, so what Kylie is talking about, I will reference it here in a minute. But anyways, they had this whole, like, in Cedar Point, if you're going to do something like that, okay, you already had skeletons that were on a boat ride and stuff like that that they moved and they put it as part of, like, the, um, you know, the train ride and stuff like that. Those were better than the things that they put, like, because these were supposed to be, like, animatronic things and stuff like that. They literally are, like, play place material 
just like statue things that are on this. And like, they haven't even done a good job at like covering up that the boat ride was there. They just like have left it abandoned. Like you go on the ro uh, the train and it's literally like, you could see where they put up tarps and stuff like that. And they've covered parts of it. Part of this ride though, is they keep saying about this cop, this big snake, right? And at the end, you see the big snake and it's like by a boat and stuff like that. It made me think of Anaconda. But the reason Kylie brought that up is because one of the people that I know, they said the reason why they have a hard time keeping, like using anything for that island for Cedar Point is they have a huge snake problem, a huge like coyote. They have like, it makes it hard to be uninhabitable. Yeah, I bet they probably got some anti-venom. Oh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> that's where we need to go, they Kylie. They probably do, and that's bullshit. I that's have to where... call and find out if my hospital... Dude, I hope they do, if them. they got snakes there. Dude, if they, I feel like if there's an area where there's poisonous snakes, fucking ambulances, first responders, and the hospitals... Well, I don't know, remember Disney venom. World? Disney area, that crocodile or alligator ate that kid. Oh so, my God. yeah, that oh was God, that's true. Are you serious? Yeah, and, that and happened years ago. And their um, defense was, we have science that say don't go in the water. Yeah, it's like by their their hotel and stuff, and they have that kid. Yeah, and and listen, like Cedar Point, it is kind of, that is a crazy place to be, right? Like I've talked about it before. That is an island off of, off of Sandusky that's literally connected by like, only like two ways to get unless you're in a boat and it's like a big you know thing where and they're on a different water table like there's a lot of challenges to that okay and that island has been there forever like cedar point has been around since early 1900s and even before then the beach was a popular spot for immigrants back in the day and so there's a big history of stuff but so in their defense i get it but at the same time, what the fuck? What the fuck? So, and it does go into like their Wild West theme because we have like a Wild West. I'll be honest, Cedar Point. We're not in the Wild Wild West. Cedar Point, I, I feel, I fear we have lost the mark. Um, I, I appreciate Lost's the Wild West. That's different, dude. We have. Camp Snoopy, then we have Ghost Town, and then we have the um, Boulevard we area, where it's all of a sudden it's the 50s and the 60s, and then we have um, okay, well, then oh, I Fiesta Village, where <laughs> it's all um, what is it, Mexican things randomly, and then it really <laughs> doesn't make any sense. See, that then makes sense why Knott's and Cedar Point are like cousins because. That same thing, like wow, well, there's a colonial town. area too that's supposed to be like the the time of like when all the inventions, the great inventions, and literally, this is what it is it's you got the front, you got the middle where they have coasters where it's like the 50s restaurant and stuff like that, and that's no, like the that thing and stuff, and you got the train, and then you have like wow, West Town. And then you have Camp Snoopy and you have the little kitty land up front. And then they have the boardwalk that they just like built out. And that's probably the nicest part that they, they did. Like if they get rid of that restaurant, I will probably riot because that's the nicest feature they have brought so far to Cedar Point. Um, but like I understand Wild West, but like Lake Erie's full of fucking pirate ship like bones. Like Lake Erie is where pirate ship like really went off. Like it, it, we got some history there. We got some history with the lighthouses and stuff. Yeah, like let's build use our brain. Off that. Yeah, like like make a dark. You do you realize how cool it would be to have a dark ride? I understand you can't do Pirates of the Caribbean because Pirates of the Caribbean pirate. But could you imagine if they did a uh like a ghost? I just like, thought of Caribbean of pirates. <laughs> You but, know, like, Caribbean pirates. But, like, but like a dark ride based on like you know shipwreck like kind of thing stuff like that like you could you could really knock it out of the park these things you're building nowadays i 
I'm not this is an anaconda to Cedar Point lesson. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just something I'm passionate about because I I have the I have the pictures, right? But my uh, my grandfather was a manager at Cedar Point a couple years ago. But more specifically, my uncle was an iron worker. He worked on both Iron Dragon and Magnum. And he was one of those people that were up like 200 feet in the air welding that thing together. So we need to get it together because because you're losing me. You're losing me. We have lost the plot, Karen. So especially when that, that boat ride is only two years old and you just... That was one of the few things I could enjoy, okay? You go right around the little boat, you know, ha, ah, it's a cool fun. And it was like Jungle Cruise. I, w I wasn't saying it was the great, like, it wasn't the most thought out, okay? But still. And I understand maybe now why, after doing Anaconda, why they wouldn't do a snake animatronic. Because watching that thing move, we're putting the video down in the description. Watch. We watch should it. just make a separate horror film about the Anaconda animatronic coming and ha like coming to life somehow dude that snake was um in the movie just itself like that was scary that yeah, was yeah. legit scary when that thing was coming out i jumped yeah and the fact that we we you and seeing that video the fact that that head moves like it does and it yeah <laughs> i'm gonna be honest and that's in the 90s okay the yeah. 90s so i yeah I'm sorry we got on a Cedar Point tangent, but, you know, I had to get it in somehow. What scared you guys the most? Oh, uh, for me, the biggest part that scares me about the big snake, right, is being squeezed to death. Like, and not being able to escape that. Like, and you have to choose, do I get suffocated to death? Do I drown? You know, that to me is just like. Uh, I don't, yeah. Well, there's multiple things that, like, I was just fucking traumatized as a kid, and still as an adult, I think it's even more, like, definitely, I, I have trauma with snakes because of this movie. Thank you, Dad. I, I, I love all the trauma you've given me. Um, I, I pick snakes over, uh, spiders, though, I'm gonna be honest, because I can at what least... The fuck, dude? What the fuck? You're not... I can step on a spider, bro. I can't step on a you snake. Step on a snake. Listen! Listen, I'm from the land where those spiders fight back, okay? Like, I'm not doing that. You're like, little snakes. You, <laughs> I, uh, snakes, at least if I catch it the right way, I could toss it, right? And I could. I'm not even it. touching it, bro. I'm not doing nothing. I'm not getting a gun. Yeah. Yeah. Mary's going to fucking pick it up. Or not Mary, Cass. Are you fucking crazy? I would much rather, like, you have to remember, though, I have pictures, okay? I have held snakes before, okay? I have touched snakes. Spiders, no, they have too many legs. And I'm oh, sorry. When, um, Steven or Kale got the fucking wasp stuck in his throat. Oh, God. He me out as a kid. And then when fucking Sarone got swallowed... And then was spit out and winked. I fucking lost it. Yeah. What are you doing, Mary? That's the You just missed my whole thing. Where it has yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah. That's the roan, the snake. That's the roan, yeah. yeah. Been, that was an epic fail, and I've been holding on to the thing this whole time. <laughs> um, so. Where's your Britney Spears snake? I'm a um so getting into the facts my fact sheet um these come from imdb um the Wait, first, i want to clear something up you guys know the tribe that they were working or looking for does not really exist but yeah there are religions that do like worship snakes there are, yeah I, not been able to find the documentary that watched it before. Yeah, but oh, there's a lot of Baptist <laughs> yeah. religions that like yeah. like parcels that that's never been confirmed, but I think that they said like that that was something that like when uh J uh K Rowling when she did um Harry Potter that was oh, something yeah, that's a big snake. Yeah and yeah. but what she they speak the language of the snake, right? Because that's how they know that Harry and 
him are connected. No. I, they said that like they, th- it was never confirmed, but like that she possibly drew inspiration. Cause if you think about it, true. So true blood, right. And the beginning sequence when they're doing the, like um, the, for the show where it's like the, the baptism and stuff like that. Think about that. That's a lot of those scenes, right. With the snakes and the like, uh, you know, so yeah, that's, I got you. Um, so, <laughs> um, there are some um, uh, some facts in here that might terrify our dreams. Um, there's some incorrect I mean, uh, things. I have nightmares pretty much every night, so it's fine. Um, so so about snakes. they, <laughs> you know that the green anaconda screams were actually done by an actor. It was done by Frank Welker, who actually is the voice of Scooby-Doo and Fred Jones and most of the uh, Scooby-Doo iterations like the cartoons. Um, He's the one that did that. Um, The two large snakes in the film were actually an animatronic. 40 foot 5,000 pound queen and a 25 foot, 1500 pound warrior. Nope. nope. So, the, so not one animatronic snake, two. 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 Um, so I'm trying to find out where exactly. So you were talking about the British actor uh, Warren Westbridge, the role Dude, of he has the, has the perfect National Geographic voice. So, but here's the thing Tim Curry was actually considered for that role. Really? Mm-hmm. He would have done very well in that, too. And in regards to that, um, Jillian Anderson auditioned from Sci Fi, um, auditioned for the role of Denise. Um, you know, the, the man, the one that's trying to, you know, uh, coordinate everything. Um, but she lost out to Carrie were her, um, the other crazy thing that Julianne Margulies turned down the role of Terry Flores, played by Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Aniston, Kate Beckinsale, Nicole Kidman, Juliette Binoche, Kim Basinger and Sandra Bullock were all considered at one point in time. No, I think Juliana Margulies would have been good. I don't know, though. The way she disemboweled fucking Go ship. Go ship. Yeah. I'm so salty about that. What did I just see her in recently? I was re-watching uh, I mean, I get it. I have- it was a, she was like a real estate but, a, but like a heroin addict. I thought that was weird. You don't regret that, but you regret ghost ship. Don't come for me. Don't come for me. I'm just asking the question, Julie Marley's. <laughs> so, several shots where perspective is played with and the green anaconda is not shown are a tribute to Jaws. Another movie where the antagonist is a large, wild, and cornivorous animal. Um, the blue eyes are very uncommon in Paraguay. Um, which is the country that John Voigt's character is supposed to be from. So they're trying to say that his nationality. Bro, I did not understand that. Like, why are they trying, like, no. No. Um, According to Rotten Tomatoes, this is one of Helen Mirren's favorite films. Dame Helen Mirren. So kudos to you, Helen Mirren. You You got great taste. Yeah, she's got great taste. I mean, I already loved you, but like, I think I love her more. I love you more. Like, you you get the plot. Um, So, this is one of two movies that Ice Cube did in 1997. The other one being Dangerous Ground. Um, Early in the film, Owen Wilson's character wears a shirt which has the words Good Day made on it. This could possibly be a reference to his Australian castmate. They haven't confirmed that, though. Um, apparently, green anacondas are the heaviest snakes in the world. Yeah, although, I short, 
Although shorter than described in the film, they do attack other larger creatures, but rarely attack humans. Yeah, I've read that. That, like, really, there's not, like, anacondas don't really attack humans a whole lot. Yeah. Anaconda, the anacondas in the film attack the humans, but not each other. In real life, anacondas practice cannibalism. Female yeah. anacondas, which are larger, are known to consume smaller male anacondas. Good for you, anacondas. That's nasty. <laughs> That's nasty. Um, the blood of monkeys that Sarone throws to Terry and Danny was made with jelly and plum juice. Nice. Um, how, do you guys want to guess what the body count in this movie is? Hmm. Seven. Fifteen. Six. Highly was There are only three people that survived the film. I was See? thinking there were some hidden ones, like yeah, because there was a lot of fast-paced stuff going yes. on. Yeah. Um, Terry, Danny, and Steven were the only three survivors at the end of the movie. Um, after filming had wrapped, John Voight insisted on keeping the prop monkey that he shot and used as anaconda bait. He still has the monkey to this day, kept in an undisclosed location. Weird. It's fake, right? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Um, so don't quote me on this, but apparently the... CGI that was used in the film, it cost a thousand dollars per minute, a hundred thousand dollars per minute, um, for CGI back in the day, and that's why they use the animatronic snake. Um, if that is wrong, that's 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 to insane, but I yeah. believe it. Um, within the movie, you can really see two snakes. Two scenes with real anacondas. The first scene in when they blow up the barrier that obstructs the river. After the explosion, several of the snakes that fall in the boat are green anacondas. You can also see a boa constrictor. That second scene where Terry enters the anaconda's nest. Uh, the snakes they show are real green anacondas. So yeah, they were yeah. really working with real anacondas. This is crazy. And this may be what leads into our discussion. Chris Farley was offered to play the character of Danny Rich, which I assume was Owen Wilson's character. Although, um, um, actually, that was, I believe, Ice Cube's character. Oh, although yeah. he was interested in participating in the film, he could not participate because his calendar coincided with the production of Beverly Hills Ninja. Oh, good, because I'm glad we have that. Yeah. I, mean, I love Beverly Hills Ninja. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it too. So um, that would make sense. Um, in reality, anacondas have rounded pupils. In the movie, the anaconda has slanted pupils to give it a frightening and villainous appearance. This is a similar trick that was used in Jaws by uh, really? Steven Spielberg. Hmm. So there are some odes to that. Apparently, the largest green anaconda in the film is 40 feet long, in, which was the one we talked about. In real life, the longest known anaconda was 17.1 feet long. So, not as big. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is... <laughs> so, before we get into the future of this movie, right? Talking about that. I decided to do some research like Kylie did. And I watched Lake Placid versus Anaconda. You can thank me later. Is currently uh, streaming. I think it's uh, streaming on Tubi. I watched it on YouTube TV. It was on Sci-Fi. Wasn't bad as as to Bermuda Tentacles. Um, but uh, basically, if you want to know the plot of this movie, I'm going to explain this to you. If you don't want to know, skip over. Go watch it. Um, it was entertaining. But essentially, they take the crocodile DNA from the crocodiles in Lake Placid and put it in the anaconda, a pregnant anaconda, so they can have crocodile anaconda hybrid babies. And then most of the movie is 
the crocodiles fucking shit up and then the anacondas coming from the side and fucking the crocodiles up like squeezing them to death and shit i mean i don't blame either side really no yeah. both traumatized and, and you want to know the greatest part about this they're not even gonna believe this you're gonna think this is this fake news okay this is real though you could google it google if she tells us Robert England is in this movie. I read that somewhere. Robert England. Is, is that why you watched it? I did not know he was in it until after I started watching it. When they rolled the credits, I was like, what? Hmm? And he was like, yeah, I'm in this movie. Like, he showed up and I was like, oh, that makes sense. He was kind of, his character was kind of sketchy. He's the reason they are able to get the crocodiles in the first place. There's like a whole conspiracy theory element going on to if it's better than Bermuda Tentacles. That's all you gotta know. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, it, it was very interesting. It was like, you know, it's not the greatest, but it it was definitely a lot better than there is a very traumatizing scene that that's what brought up the like squeezing to me is one of the anacondas literally wrap themselves around this vehicle that the girl's in and crushes it to the point where she has to literally crawl out and she like kills herself doing it. Right. Um, so I don't know if you guys know this, but Cass has an interesting fact about snakes. Does she? Do, do I? Mm hmm. What is my interesting fact about uh, snakes? Genitalia. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. It's not an interesting fact. <laughs> it's more like a horrifying <laughs> fact. You guys only know this because of me, because I had to fucking. I just had to know. I had to know. Um, so, Mary obviously is our book person she gets a lot of she reads a lot of different kinds of books there was a book that they were releasing that was like monster romance and we stand monster romance here there's a snake one and we were like okay we're trying to figure it out <laughs> yeah we were like okay how does that so apparently snakes have two you know penises yes they do and they're called him <laughs> it, it's literally a pouch that like the snakes yeah we we had to do the research to figure it out you know we had to take one for the team what makes that worse about it though is sometimes when i'm doing talk to text and i'm talking around them i don't realize my surroundings didn't realize that my son was behind me when i was like snakes have two penises and saying that, like, he had just entered my room and I didn't realize it. And he was like, wait a minute, snakes have two penises? So now my 11-year-old is walking around with that fact. Okay, you guys ready to hear what uh, Google AI says? Male snakes, including anacondas, have two penises called hemipenis. I'm saying that wrong. Hemipenis are paired external genitals. That grow from the coca of caca. I don't know. What? <laughs> 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 structure near the hind legs. Where the fuck are the legs? The coca ca sends signals to nearby cells to turn it into genitalia. And the genitalia grow like leg buds. Snakes have this ability because their DNA is still has the ability to develop legs. But a gene called sonic hedgehog turns off the switch instead of legs and the male snake mm -hmm. develops penises. No, that's fake news. That's no, fake news. This that's that's all. Look at Google AI so okay? The gene the sonic hedgehog. The no, 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 no. Uh, that's uh, Somebody had to be messing with the AI I, I think. For, um... <laughs> Especially some of those names you said. Hey, I was mispronouncing the names. I will screenshot this to you guys. <gasps> I'm well, doing it right now, and I'm dropping it I in mean, on that. I mean, we, yeah. So, final thoughts on Anaconda. Scary as hell. And John Voight's character, what a jerk. I was so mad when he poured the blood on them. Yeah. I was so <laughs> upset. Oh, you no, know, these people took you in. <laughs> Because you they thought you were going to help, and then you did this. Sneaky, I was already... Weirdo. 
I already was kind of mad at John Voight, okay, because John Voight is uh, in a vampire movie that I like. It's Dracula Dark Prince that's got Luke Evans. She's already uh, got not Luke Evans, Luke Roberts, sorry. And I like it, okay, because Luke Roberts is great. But his character plays, like, Abraham Van Helsing, and it is a weird, like, Abraham Van Helsing, okay? Like, the whole plot is a little weird. I, I just like him, though, okay? But... The whole reason the romance gets fucked up is because that motherfucker, okay? And I was already a little, like... And they have him have, like, a prosthetic nose and stuff in that movie. And it's, like, really weird. It, it, like, I, I'm not even joking about this. But I already kind of felt a little sideways. So then I rewatched this as we're, you know, doing this. And I rewatched it a couple times. I was like, man, John Voight, we need to get you some, L, you know, some W's in this category. Because right now, you're just taking L after L, man. First you fucked up that movie. Now you're fucking up this movie. Like we we just need to get you. You, you, you know what it is. Insane. I need to go back and I need to watch the you know first Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider where it has him as her father in it and stuff and he's the knight. I need to go back and touch that grass and realize you know he's he's not bad in every movie because right now he's just taking L's left and right, man. In my opinion, like he's just fucking shit up, man. I mean, maybe that's his shtick, but a win, you know, a win is not a win in this category. Like, you were a dope villain, but that was some shit, man. You fucked some shit up. You didn't even get the Anaconda. You ended up getting eaten by him. <laughs> like, you can't. You, about a bitch. Right. You just took L's all the way around. So, my whole thing with this is. Obviously, we know why, but let's explain why we think this is something that nature strikes back, because obviously this is an, a creature, something that gets underestimated by people. No, I never underestimated a damn snake or an anaconda. Come on. Anybody who does is a crackhead. I mean, I feel like people do, people still do it with sharks. And look at how many different shark yeah, movies. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It was there. funny. Before we started recording, me and Sean were watching um, Jaws. And it was at the beginning part where the mom, even though they've just shut down the beach, the mom is like, oh, let him play in his boat. What? The, be be the beach is shut down, girlfriend. Uh, uh, yeah. Go buy that kid a pool. Like, and then those guys use the roast to try and catch it, and then it ends up taking them. Like, that was like, what do you think was going to happen? Yeah. I feel like the biggest thing about this category, right, when nature strikes back, is fuck around with nature and find out. Okay? Yeah. And that's I really very unforgiving. Like, and, and you see that with Volcano that, you know, Kylie and I talked about, and you came in with your special news report. Um, go watch that episode. Scary. Uh, but then this, and it very much is that idea of nature is trying to tell you to back the fuck down. You keep going. You are going to pay the consequences. Well, they, and it's like now, you know, with global warming, like twisters just came out. Like the severity of nature striking back is like heavy fucking heavy. Which I, I'm not going to say a ton of it because Mary still needs to watch twisters with her mother-in-law and her mother, but I will say that Twisters, if anyone has a problem with Twisters, come talk to us. Come talk to us. Cause I, 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 I just I heard it's really sad. It, it is very sad, but it also too, this, we're not going to stop making tornado movies. Right. And I think for the subject that it is covering, it is a very different story. It does very much talk about, the effects of global warming and how are we going to fix this? Because, you know, we didn't fuck shit up, you know, but we're trying to go in and fix it. How do we fix this? How do we turn this around? And it's, it's a lot crazier. Like there's a lot more damage in that. Like in the original twister, there were, you know, a few scenes here and there. There's a lot in this movie with the damage part of it and seeing how it affects communities and stuff like that. I think it's what great. I remember from the first one is the cow. Yeah. Yeah. It's I will say it's a I feel it's like cow. Least, I feel like at least in my opinion, it's a separate movie from the first one. Like that's yeah. what I've heard. 
they're very, they're connected in just certain enough tissue to really connect it in the feel and stuff like that. But it's, it's not enough to be like, okay, well, we just chat over Bill Paxton's legacy. Cause I don't think we did. I think Bill mm -hmm. Paxton. Well, he supported them making another one and he didn't want to be did. in it. He did. And I think he really, if he would have lived to see this, I think he would have been really proud well, of the so approach. He's, he's yeah. Like. Yeah. So, but I, I, I definitely suggest checking that out since that recently came out, but it is very much that be careful what you wish for. Like nature tells you to stop. Don't you should stop. Yeah. Because you're going to end up having to pay the consequences because look at Volcano. They, they saw the warning signs. They could have stopped. They could have gotten people out a lot quicker. Dante's Peak the same way. And it, it's not until it's too late. And I think the same thing with nature and this. There are certain things that don't need to be fucked with. Like Sarone thinks he's finding this rare snake and he's going to get money off of it. And instead doesn't realize that this is a creature. Like yeah. this is this is a unobtained, like you cannot control this. And he really fucks around and finds out. Let's be honest. He deserves um, it. He, do he does. I was so, not sad. Yeah, no. John Boy, I, I will find another movie where you could get a W in, okay? But right now you're just taking some L's. Come back, come back to the table in a little bit. We'll talk. Um, <laughs> we'll talk. So now we're going to move on to our favorite thing in horror this week. Um, Kylie, since it's your anniversary episode, we're gonna let you go first. Well, I hate to, I, I think I brought it up the last time, so I hate to bring it up again, but it's just so fucking wild. The drama with the conjuring house. It just keeps going. It just keeps going, and she just keeps like the whole pay the whole conjuring page is not even about the conjuring house anymore or the business. It's just her rambling on crazy ass fucking shit. Saying that ghosts are telling her that they're out to get her and that they're stealing money from the conjuring house. And let's be very clear about this. The reason that we are interested in this, right, is because of the fact that it is, it, we're not saying that the drama is great because we do not like she's, drama in our community. She's making the but, world but, question the legitimacy behind that's anything. Not, that's why all of us are frustrated, is because it already takes enough to get legitimate. And now, Taking it a step further, there's we're calling for a boycott. And honestly, I, I agree with Jason. Like when he's yeah. saying, you know, let's boycott. And other people are agreeing with him too. Because if she's making debt. And he has a video. We'll put it in the description down below. So you can see everything from himself. Oh, but let everyone know what, what Jason you're talking about. Jason, Jason Hawes from TAPS. Um, who's his daughter worked at the conjuring house that's why he was involved because there are other employees that jason also knew like there was a former taps member as well and that it taps is the paranormal investigation group that was behind ghost adventures um so but in his video he blocked her number. He's made police reports, but she keeps making new numbers. She keeps saying things. Of, she keeps threatening his life. And yeah. I think his whole thing is, listen, if you want to come after me, okay, fine. But you're come. But his whole thing is, is now people are going to be coming on this property without proper protocols in place because a lot of the employees are not well, there. Going to get hurt. Someone's going to get hurt and he does not want to be responsible for that. So that is why he is calling for a boycott. Let's be and honest, I, she's a danger to herself and others. Like, I'm just because she, the part that I don't think we touched upon last time, there was somebody that was on the property. She said it was Jason coming to kill her, and it was somebody staying for a haunt. And that's why she did the death threats and stuff. And so Jason's saying, if she could do that, I keeps going with it. Could you imagine? Her thinking that okay, this other person because Jason has a truck, and it, it they could kill he she could kill him. It's and I, 
it's just become nothing about the conjuring house no and, it, and it's so sad because there are sacred things in our community and that's one of the more legitimate ones that the former owners did a good job at like really trying to restore that and stuff like that but at this point until there's kind of some you know something changing in that situation i think i think we should just we should agree with the boycott because i i do not want to be promoting it uh, or like saying hey this is go do this and stuff like that and someone get hurt and i think that's yeah. where jason come is coming to and when you've been doing this as long as we have you can tell when someone's being legitimate in a video or not and i've watched a couple of his videos before this and him talking he has nothing he has no real skin in the game other than his daughter was involved in this right and she got screwed over but i really truly think he's doing this because he's been in the paranormal game a long time and he is really just trying to protect people that's my belief there are people who could disagree or agree well, but i just trying to protect like the history and yeah. the legitimacy of the conjuring house yeah because think know? about even just the episodes of ghost adventures where they would go in and they would do the history and all the things that they tried to do like they they were really the blueprint for a lot of what we think about today in paranormal yeah. especially in tv so um love jason and um i i hope that this changes i hope that this isn't a part of our community anymore i really just hope it's not so um but yeah that's um i wouldn't say that's our favorite thing in horror but that's probably the most buzz thing about because that just keeps devolving it um, just yeah it, it's every day it's at all day yeah just yeah, crazy yeah stuff. literally like all day every day yeah just crazy things uh mary what about you i'm a little late to the game on this but i started the fall of the house of usher and <laughs> it's really good i need it i need I to catch you. up I told oh my there, God. There is, yeah there is an actress that she's an irish actor and she's on tiktok and she is she, in, was, she was on um the midnight society yeah, or whatever yeah. the midnight club. And she, she does a bunch of, and i follow her already i think she's hilarious she's she's good in this yes and so i already was so <laughs> i already was sold so no you gotta jump on this i'm late to the game on it it's really good and it really you know it's mike flanagan so yeah no i i agree so after we get off of here I am going to be watching Long Legs. Long Legs came out today on VOD. I'm going to watch it tomorrow. I'm a little traumatized about watching it tonight uh, after this, but it, it'll no, be okay. No it's lights fine. on. No lights on. Don't do that to me, Kylie. I'm going to have a nightlight on, okay? I, I, I You know, I, I'm a horror fan, but I can't have a nightlight. It just adds to the effect. I mean, then again, I'm a person that I fucking will fall asleep in the dark watching Hell House Origins. Car the car oh, the only way to watch the horror movies with the lights off. Mm. Yeah. Um, I will say my favorite thing, week, thing about this week in horror is I did get to go to Ohio Terracon, which has now moved to Erie Culture Fest. Um, and we will put the uh, link in the description down below for that information. Uh, but they will be doing that again. But they did a great job. Thank you, Zach, and his whole entire crew for having me out on behalf of the Horrorcraft Podcast. I got to meet a load of ton of great people. And you might see some of those faces on here. We'll see. Um, but the thing that made me so excited is two things. Number one, Jim did embarrass the hell out of me when we rolled up. Bam Margero was sitting out having a moment to himself and I was just gonna I didn't want to be that person um and then, but then I remembered like Bam on the TV show and stuff like that and Bam always seemed like that kind of person that like was very like interactive with people so Jim pulled the window down and he was like say hi to him and so I was like hi Bam and he was like he like smiled at me and like went hi and I was super excited about that so I I was super happy. So I got to tell Brittany about that, which was huge because I never thought we were doing that. But one of the movies, I didn't realize I watched it until after I watched it. And then I was like, oh yeah, I think I've seen this before. But uh, 
Brittany had told me when we first started the podcast to watch Frankenhooker. And I was like, oh my God, what is Frankenhooker? It's and amazing. She, she actually gave me the a bunch of her DVDs at one point in time. And um, she had a copy of Frankenhooker. And so I watched Frankenhooker and I got to meet Patty Mullen this weekend. I got to give her some of our stickers and I did um, get to actually like hug her. She's amazing. She did give me a picture, a signed picture of her that says uh, want to date with Patty Mullen on it, um, which I absolutely am so incredibly thankful for. But just getting to interact with people on that level is fantastic. I met a bunch of wonderful vendors, Nightmare 1984. Uh, we love you, Adam. He is such a cool person. He, I have some of his prints now and just, I just love the experience. So I am not one that gets out and does horror conventions often. Um, Cause I never thought that that was a realm that I was ever going to be in, but this was a great experience and um, I will definitely be going next year. Definitely be bringing my kid next year, which definitely says something um, because I feel like it's a safe environment, but just everybody, like everyone around, like I'm, I'm going to, you know, if you go back and you look at my original post, there's so many people, but podcasters, vendors like Josh Hoarder Quarter, he even shouted us out too. And we had gotten a chance to connect because we had been following each other for a while um, and talking tapes, you know, Tiki there, all of those people are super cool. So I'm just super glad that we all got to get together and they knocked it out of the park despite certain challenges that they had. And I just have mad respect for those guys. So super excited to see that, how that, you know, pops up next year. And um, always love the fact that there's a horror convention going on in my backyard. Cause like, it's a lot easier for me to be like, okay, I can make the trip if it's 45 minutes, an hour away. Um, right. So, but thank you so much for having me. I loved the experience and I got to live my fangirl fantasy. Um, and it made me feel so incredibly great. Um, but yeah, love those guys. And uh, I'm super excited to see them grow and build something that's just going to be super cool for our area. So um, if you're listening, Zach, guy, anybody who is involved, you guys did great. And uh, we will definitely be out next year. Um, so, but that, yeah, that was our week in horror. And I will let you know about long legs and how it traumatized me next week. <laughs> next week. Yeah. Yeah. I may need a couple days to process, you know, I, I might need a little cook, cook a little bit on it. Um, so, cause I love Nick Cage and I, I'm a, I'm a little terrified. You should be. I've heard it traumatize a lot of people and they can't look at him the same. Yep. Which I'll that's never look at him the same. I never want to see him <laughs> anything else but horror now. Let's go. <laughs> you know that audio? Let's go. Let, you know, let's, let's go. Let's, let's, let's fucking go. I guess, you know, get to, yep. Okay. Okay, I guess we're doing this. So, um, and if you had not got a chance, go listen to the initial episode of the Midnight Bite with the collaboration between us and Governor Screams. Oh, so good. Oh my gosh. And y'all, we talk about Cassandra and her vampire knowledge. Bro, she comes to the table. Girl, there were some things in that episode that I even surprised. I was like, how did I remember that about Greek mythology? And like, I was like, man, I really watched a lot of shit back in the day. I really read a lot of shit back in. The wow. That really is percolating back here. So, you know, I may not have common sense, but I have tons of knowledge like that. So let's, let's yeah, do it. If anyone's watching and you see me yawn a few times, I'm sorry. I'm here. It is 8 o'clock for me. It is 11 o'clock for these ladies. And we've all had a oh. lot of it. But we're here for you. Yeah. 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 It's been a... But we're here. We celebrate Kylie. Yeah. Those are so I'm, cute, by the way. I'm always... I mean, these are the Walmart ones, which I will say, Walmart, if you ever get rid of these, ho these ones that you come out with for Halloween, we... You know, I, my my followship is hanging by a thread. Okay, 
this might be the thread that cuts that, okay? I mean, I can't really say that because there's really only a Walmart by where I live, but I might have to reconsider it, okay? That's all I'm saying, I guess. Um, but these are adorable and they are a ton of people went crazy for them. I get it because they're cropped and I am, I am a hot person. Uh, I mean, I am a hot person, but um, I am a naturally hot person. So having something like this makes me feel like I can wear pajamas and I'm not like confined, but you will see a ton of cute pajamas this spooky season um, because, you know, I'm here with my friends, so I'm going to be comfortable and cute. And we film time. at night. <laughs> yeah. And we film at night and uh, everything works out great. So um, let us know what you liked in horror this week. Give Kylie some love. Drop some black heart emojis. Black heart. Yeah. Who, oh, well, it's red heart, but shh. I don't know how to do it. Um, and we will see you. <laughs> we will see you in the next episode. So until then, it's me, Cassandra, and Kylie. And Mary. Mary with her snake. Snake. Um, but we are the Horrorcraft Podcast, and we say goodbye and stay spooky. Bye. Bye. All right.